everybody. So today we're going to start off by finding out what's in our backyard. Why don't you tell us what's out in our backyard? We've got a stream. Okay, so if I were to throw some yucky pollution, some chemicals from doing the yard, would those chemicals just stay in the stream in our backyard? No, they just go through the stream um, to a river, to a bay, and to the ocean. Very good. So that's basically just a quick overview of a watershed. Awesome job. So let's talk a little bit about what a watershed is. It's the area of land that water will flow across or through on its way to a larger body of water, like a stream, a lake, or a pond like we see in this picture. Watersheds are separated by divides, and divides are areas of higher elevations. The way watersheds are separated by divides is because of how the rain falls from the higher elevations. As the rain falls onto the land, it will roll down one way or another into a particular watershed based on the divide that it comes off of. Virginia has nine small watersheds that feed into the three major watersheds of Virginia, and they're named based on the major rivers that support them. We can see that the James River watershed is the largest one in Virginia, and all of these watersheds will um, flow into one of the three main watersheds, the Chesapeake Bay watershed, the North Carolina Sound watershed, or the Gulf of New Mexico watershed. Most of Virginia drains into the Chesapeake Bay watershed, including parts of Virginia Beach. Virginia Beach doesn't all go into the Chesapeake Bay watershed. It's actually divided into the Chesapeake Bay watershed and the North Carolina Sound in the southern parts of Virginia Beach. So just to put this into a little bit of perspective for you guys, the target just up from the school that I teach at is in the um, Chesapeake Bay watershed. So if someone were to pour chemicals down into a storm drain there, it would make its way out into the Chesapeake Bay. And our school is in the North Carolina Sound watershed. So if someone were to pollute the pond that's across from our school, all of that pollution would end up making its way out into the North Carolina Sound. The health of a watershed is directly related to the water quality and um, scientists will monitor the abiotic and the biotic factors in a watershed because those both play an important role in um, how good the water quality is in an area. Now remember the abiotic factors are the non-living things like the water and the soil, sunlight, temperature, and the biotic factors are all the living things in the area. Uh, the protists, the plants, the animals, and bacteria and whatnot. Scientists monitor the um, water quality by collecting samples and analyzing abiotic factors and monitoring the biotic factors. Um, when they're looking at the abiotic factors, they'll use a water test kit to measure the pH or how acidic the water in the uh, watershed is. They'll check the salinity, how salty it is. They'll check for how much oxygen is dissolved in that water. That's very important for things that uh, breathe underwater like fish. Scientists will also use thermometers to measure the temperature of water and they'll use various weather instruments to measure air temperature and air pressure and rainfall and all the different things that um, the weather can affect the, uh, the watershed with. Some of the biotic factors that they look at is they'll take a sample of water and use a microscope to look at the microorganisms, the little tiny things like the protists, um, that are found in that watershed. They'll also monitor um, the larger organisms uh, like the ducks and the fish, and oftentimes they'll tag them and release them. You may have seen animals in the wild with tags, and those are so that scientists can count them and they can um, monitor their migration patterns and just see how many stay in the area versus how many leave. Now that you have those watershed basics, hopefully you have the information you need to help you. Keep going, keep growing. Bye! Bye.